When we add the pain of the past and worries about the future, this is when we get, this is when we get overwhelmed. And so part of mindfulness is about staying in, in, in this moment. And when we're in this moment, we are, really, we are very rarely uh, overwhelmed. Mostly when people get overwhelmed, they're thinking about what they could have done earlier or what they might do in the future. In this moment, not very much is happening. Because in this moment, when we are overwhelmed, other, other things take over. We become more instinctive and we, we, we tend to react uh, differently. So this skill about one mindfulness, right, is about, is about thinking about all the consequences that are caused in today's world by people multitasking. Yeah? We do, you know, if you were to look, for example, at you know, most car crashes, for example, most car crashes are caused by people driving along the road and getting distracted by something else. They're driving along the road. So imagine if there was a black box in a car like there is in airplanes. What you might hear is things like, someone's driving along the road and they're like, oh my God, look at that. Or, you know, driving along the road and I'm just gonna change the radio stage, boom, yeah? So we know that lots of dysregulation happens when we're distracting. So one mindfulness is a way to try to avoid that. Because we know, again, that doing too many things at one time, it actually exhausts the brain. And it has all sorts of, uh, and it has all sorts of other consequences. So for me, if I'm sitting at home and, you know, I like lamb chops and I like football, right? And if I try to do both of those things at the same time, I miss out on the richness of those experiences, doing two things that I enjoy. You know, I'll be sitting there eating my lamb chops, and I'll be like, oh, these are tasty, and there's like a oh, goal, I've missed it, or there's a goal, whoops, I've missed it, yeah? Or I'm staring at the football and just mindlessly eating, and I'm not really tasting that either. So I'm squeezing two events that could give me joy into, into one moment and getting nothing of them. So if I took a game of football, an hour and a half, and eating my dinner, which is about 20 minutes, yeah? If I did those things separately, my pleasure has now gone, instead of from nothing, to kind of two hours. So that's how it can work in a sort of more positive way. In a, in a negative way, yeah? I, or I could think about it in a negative way. Um, it might be, you know, I remember years ago having to write reports at work and, you know, uh, and, and working from home. You know, when I started working from home in the, the beginning of the pandemic, what I did was I just thought, oh, this is great. I just sit at home. So I stuck the radio on in the background and, you know, I would be, I would be, I would be typing away. And as I was typing away on my reports, what I'd, I'd sort of read back the report and I'd think, because everything was taking me so much longer. So I'd read back over my report and I'd be like, oh yes, this person is showing signs of this, that and the other, and it was raining outside and yet it's going to snow in Scotland. And I'd be thinking, where did that come, where did that come into it? And what's happened is I'm halfway listening to the, to the radio as that's going on. My brain's distracted. So writing those reports was taking ages and ages. So what I did is I remembered about this, and what I started doing is that, that you know, when I was writing reports, I would just sit and focus on that. And what I noticed is that when I just concentrated on my mind in that, the reports were quicker and easier and much more effective. And not, this, is not just my ex, this is not just my experience. This is also research. So there's, uh, there's research about this idea of one mindfulness. And there was some research done, which is my favorite kind of re research, was done in the 1950s. And, and what they did, was they took, um, they took a bunch of people that identified themselves as uh, chronic warriors. And what they said to these people is, they said, look, what we want you to do is every day at about 10 o'clock in the morning, we want you to worry. And whatever you do, we just want you to worry for half an hour. And when you notice that you get distracted, we just want you to go back and worry and worry and worry. And they called it worry time. And what they noticed is that when people deliberately focused on just one thing at the moment, it changed the experience. And in this particular piece of research, what they saw was that 
two things happened. Well, there was a few things happened, but two things I'm going to mention that were important. One was that um, when people started worrying, had to worry constantly for half an hour, they'd get distracted. So it broke the idea in their minds that all they were was chronic worriers. And the second thing that happened is that when people would worry later on in the day, what they would do is they'd think to themselves, ah, I'll save this for worry time. Yeah? Or they'll save it till 10 o'clock the next day. And so what they did is they put that worry away. And what it did is it taught people about what you call mental compartmentalization, yeah? or being mindful. Put it away and deal with it um, another time. And, and what this did over a six week period is it changed so much for these ladies. And the, the, the experiment was only supposed to go on for a short amount of time, but the, in, the, the, the details that came for it were so interested, they extended it again and again. So if you want to try this for yourself, right, and see, you know, like to recap, right, doing too many things has consequences, um, you know, like my report writing and, and listening to the radio at the same time or eating or watching football, have a go yourself, right? And what you can do is sit down and take your right foot and turn it clockwise and at the same time take your right hand and see if you can draw the letter six with your finger. And what you'll see is it's very, diffi it's very difficult to do it. It's very difficult to do it. And this shows you about the disconnect when we do two things because you see all activities that we do come from different parts of the brain. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you some ways that you, could, that you can practice this. This skill is one of my favourites and although it's very difficult to convince people to get going with this because people say oh I've got, I've got such a busy life I'd never get anything done if I did um, you know if I did if I just did one thing after another. After a few weeks of trying this, most people never go back to that kind of uh, multitasking. So this is one that you've definitely got to suck and see. What I want you to do is I want you to practice, I want you to choose two things that you multitask and just decide for a set period of time, like the worry time experience, yeah, what, uh, practicing one or the other of those. So you might be noticing that you watch TV and you're on social media. You might notice that you're talking to people and you're glancing at your phone. You might notice that you're uh, doing schoolwork uh, or studies and um, you know, listening to music at the same time. You might be in the gym and listening to music. So what I want you to do is separate those tasks just for a while and do one thing or the other and note down your experiences. Note down what it was like the first time you did it, which is usually a little bit difficult, and then go back and check it after a while and evaluate it after you've been practicing it for a while. Another activity that you could do is you could um, get in the bath and have a slow motion bath, right? So, so do everything in slow motion. So like when you're bathing, bathe, or when you're walking, walk. Yeah. When you're worrying, worry, and when you're laughing, laugh. So have a bath, notice the bubbles maybe, notice the smells, notice the temperature, notice the feeling of the water on your, on your, on your skin, and see how you get on. So what I think you'll notice at, at this is that you'll notice that you'll feel calmer, you'll feel less fatigued, Less, less tired, that you'll feel brighter, uh, you'll feel brighter in your mood. You'll also feel more in control and you won't be so distracted. Remember, it's the distractions that are causing the problems in your life. So you know what I'm going to say now? If this stuff is having some, uh, some kind of effect, there's loads of other stuff on the Instagram, so go have a look at that.